On this week's panel, we've got Greville Pabs from WBP Property Group. Hello. And Robert LaRocca from the REIV. Good to see you again. Today we're talking about how to set a sale price and how do you assess the value of your property. Robert, how do you set a sale price? Look, it really depends upon whether you're the real estate agent who's been hired to sell the property or whether it's your property and that's a much more emotive uh, decision to make at that point. If you're the real estate agent, you've got to follow what's in the Estate Agents Act and that requires that you provide the vendor with an estimated selling price where the range not greater than 10% when you, they sign the sales authority. So effectively, that's the real estate agent telling the vendor that's what they think it will sell for. Do you ever get the situation where the owners think their property is worth more? I think you probably always, almost yeah. always get that situation. I mean, you know, value is a really topical issue. Um, people always want to know what their home is or may be worth. Uh, and everybody's got a different view about that because everyone comes to it with a different set of values and desires and needs. So it's really hard, you know, the real estate agent can't really provide an exact value. They're providing an indication. And then you go through the marketing process and, you know, it might come out the other end at much more or about that point, or it may not sell if it goes to auction sometimes as well. So, you know, value is a very difficult thing to get exactly right. Gre Greville, what's your tips on setting a value or a price for a property? Well, firstly, uh, value um, doing evaluation, it's, it's, uh, it's an art, it's not a science. So Robert's very correct and it is very difficult to come up with, uh, with evaluation because it, it, it is, there's a lot of emotive um, issues. But I suppose we don't, we don't sell real estate, but we do advise um, uh, vendors and we do obviously value um, property. And some of the, the things that, that, that we say is that it really got to, value is really undermined by the data and, and have the right research and the right information. So when I'm advising vendors, you know, I really encourage them to go out and have a look um, in the marketplace, attend a number of auctions, go to lots of open for inspections. And, and also if they still um, want more confidence to, to engage an independent person in that process, such as a valuer or a buyer's agent, um, to give them uh, that type of advice. That's always the case, isn't it, Robert? There's always someone on the other side of the transaction. The seller wants the best price and the buyer wants the smallest price. It all depends upon your perspective. Mm. You know, if it's your home, you want it to sell for as much as you can possibly get. Um, but then when you go to buy that next home, you want that to sell for you know, as low as you can possibly get because it's your money. Perspective is really important. I was on council uh, in the north of Melbourne for about six years. We used to send out rates notices and I know that when people received their rates notice, their perspective was they wanted the value to be lower because mm -hmm. they wanted to have lower rates. So the perspective is really critical and a, a favourite saying of mine is it's, you know, a property is really only worth what the other person is willing to pay for it. Mm. Yeah, you, uh, that, that is correct. It is, you know, we, I have a saying as well, it, it's about you know, price is what you pay and value is what you get. Yeah, it's a good saying. And uh, just, just even on the weekend, um, I was driving around um, um, some streets in Armidale and you can, you can, I was driving down Kuyong Road and if you go to the west side of Kuyong Road and you go down some of those streets on Denby Road and Sutherland Road, Armidale Street, um, Hamden uh, Road, and, and you see what does set aside value, and it's those wide streets and it's those tree-lined avenues and, and the, the good, you know, the architectural style of those streets. And then, but if you then drive and you go down, say, on the east side of Kuyong Road and you go to some of the streets like Inverness and St George's and St James Street, it's a completely different streetscape. And, and whilst you're still in Armidale, the values are, are completely different because the streetscapes are different. And, you know, on the, on the east side, you've got the railway line and you've got noise from Dandenong Road up around Gladstone Street. And so there's, a, there's those micro things that really do determine value in, even in a, in, a, in a one suburb. How do you manage the seller's expectations in a market like we've got today? Look, vendors form their own expectations. And that's based upon, you know, their own views, but also what they see going on around them. And a lot of people now who are selling their home saw only a year ago prices go up 20 percent they may not be cognizant that half of that was catch up from the gfc when prices fell and the other half was you know probably some real growth 
Often the management of people's expectations and how they change occurs during the campaign, which is why vendors often, if they're going to a, you know, an auction, don't set their reserve till the day of, the day before um, the campaign, because they want to see what the interest is like. So if they're having their opens and they're having very low attendances, then that will form, you know, reduce their expectations. But if you know, there's 30 people coming through the house twice a week, then uh, their expectations will increase. And of course, the actual negotiation process is the ultimate way of uh, changing people's uh, expectations of what they may or may not get for their house or what someone may or may not sell. Because ultimately, you have to weigh up, you know, how important is it that I sell now as opposed to waiting? Will I get a higher price? Um, and the buyer goes through that same process as well. I have to, do I have to buy now? Because people bring to that not only the, the I suppose the views formed by what they see, but their own personal lives. Mm. I mean, you know, people don't always buy and sell homes just for the fun of it. Um, they're doing it for some life reason, and that has an impact upon how much they're willing to pay. Yeah. We need to put things in perspective. Property is not um, is something that you transact on a, on a yearly or daily basis like the share market. Yeah. It's something that when you buy real estate, because of the, the high transactional costs, you, know, you really don't see really huge, you, know, you shouldn't expect gains until you know, seven to 10 years. It really is a, a, an investment that you make over a longer term horizon. So you, you, can't, you can't look in the papers when, when they come out every, every quarter, you get the median house price and, mm. and people say, oh, look at my suburb, it's just gone up uh, 20%. But you just need to be very careful about, about those types of statistics and there can be a, a, a lot of uh, factors that can skew those, that data, um, even, even into a particular suburb where you may have had a, a, a large new development go in where there's lots of sales uh, during that quarter mm. and that can really skew the median house price for that particular quarter. Or on the other side of things, if there's transactions, less than 30 transactions in a suburb, you know, the, the median house price data then is, you know, not much good um, either, so. Mm. And that's a really good point, because you go back to, you know, what is that valuation? And mm. I mean, you know, you get your council rates, which has got a valuation written on them. Um, and then you get, you know, the median prices every quarter. Neither, neither of those are ones that your house is necessarily going to sell for. Then you can get a professional valuation. And again, that's not necessarily what your property is going to sell for. Um, so it's important to understand what all those different figures are and that ultimately on the day, if you're selling a home, it'll be sold for what other person's willing to pay for it. Yeah. Um, also, the other point about you're not doing this on a yearly basis is really important. I mean, people will pay $25,000, $40,000 in stamp duty when they buy that home. Mm -hmm. And the likelihood of making that up in capital gains in the first year is not very high. And if you do want to go down that path, then you're just you know, losing money. Yeah, good property, you, have to, you don't get any discounts. And good property, you have to pay um, market value and more, but over time, um, in five years' time or ten years' time, when you go to sell that property again, guess what? There's always it's always a well attended auction, and there's always competitive bidding. Mm. Thanks very much, Greville. Thanks, no Robert. That's all we've got time for today.